calculating the new ratio of remaining partners. Okay, we're talking about the case of a retirement. Okay, first let us understand what does this mean. We know that a partnership is formed of various partners, partners right? And these partners share profits amongst themselves which arise to a firm in some particular ratio, right? Now what can happen is we learnt about admission wherein a new partner just walked in and he was also allowed a part of the total profits kitty, right? When a new partner came in we knew and we calculated that some of the profits of these people which were available so let's say for example the total profits were earlier 100 that used to get distributed between the three of them but now when a fourth guy stepped in this 100 was also shared with him right because of which there was some reduction in the amount of profits received by these three right similar is the case okay Let's say for example, now out of these three people, let me just erase the new one for the time being. Okay. Oh, I've just knocked off this poor chap's head. Now let's say for example, there was this kitty of 100 rupees which was shared between these three people. Suddenly one of them decides, okay, I am moving out of the partnership, okay. And this could be due to various reasons. It could be due to retirement. He decides that I don't want to work with the firm. Or there could be a death of a partner. What happens after that is that the remaining two partners will now share this 100. So obviously there is an increase in the profit earned by these two people. Whatever is the increase. Let's say for example originally they were earning 30, 30 and 40. Okay, because this guy moved out, let's say both of them now get 50-50. So how much is the gain made by this person? 20. How much is the gain made by this person? 20. This gain made by these two people can also be used to calculate the something which is called the gaining ratio, which we will see subsequently. But for now, let's understand that whenever a partner retires, then his share is distributed between these two people. And there could be various situations for this. In times you might be given as to how much is to be shared, at times you might not be given. Right? So let us see this particular question which is there in front of us right now. P, Q and R were partners in a firm. So there are three people, P, Q and R and sharing profits and losses in the ratio of one third, four ninth and two ninth. So let's say this guy is Q, this is Q, this is R. So P was getting one third of the profits, Q was getting four by nine of the profits and R was getting two by nine of the total profits. Find the new ratio of the remaining partners if P retires. So what happens is this guy decides to retire from the firm. We're talking about option one. So what will happen? Whatever is his shares goes and it gets distributed amongst the remaining two partners. You are told to find out what is the new profit sharing ratio between Q and R if P retires. There are two methods through which you can do this. Okay, two methods. Method one is and these methods are applicable if you are not given what is the ratio in which this money goes to Q and R. Method one is we don't consider this at all. Okay. And we see what is the existing ratio. Of remaining partners. Okay. The partners who remain in the business are known as remaining partners and the partner who moves out is known as the outgoing partner or the retiring partner, right? 
Now, if I were to ask you, what is the ratio? 4 upon 9 and 2 upon 9. Now, there could be a situation where these denominators are different. Okay. So, instead of 2 upon 9, if you were given that, let's say, this is 4 upon 9 and this is 4 upon 18, the first thing you have to do is you have to convert them into a common denominator. Right? But in this case, fortunately, both of them have a common denominator. So, we don't need to do anything else out here. Once you have a common denominator in the ratio between these two, you just forget about the denominator. You cancel it out. Okay? And the ratio of the numerator, which is 4 is to 2, is the ratio, or you can also write this as, if you divide both of them by 2, 2 is to 1, is the ratio in which the remaining partners are going to share their profits and losses. So this was method 1. So we ignore what was being given to the old partner. We just see the ratio of the new partner in such a manner that the denominators are common. Then the ratio of the numerators is the ratio in which the new, uh, sorry, remaining partner continue to share the profits. Method two is, let's say Q, okay? If Q is to gain, how much will he gain? He already has four upon nine, which is the existing share, okay? Plus, how much does he get out of this one third? This one third I told you is distributed between Q and R. Whenever the ratio is not given, we assume that the distribution happens in this existing ratio, which means what? Out of one third, which belongs to P, we will assume that four by nine, okay? Actually, it's not four by nine, it's 4 by 6. And how do I calculate 4 by 6? 4 is basically the numerator for Q. 2 is the numerator for R, existing one. And when we divide this by the sum of these two, 4 plus 2, 6, 2 by 6. So Q will get 4 by 6 of the share of P and R will get 2 sixth. So we just write 4 by 6, you get 4 upon 9 plus 4 upon 18 right or in other words 18 is the LCM this gives you 2 times 4 8 plus 4 12 by 18 or 2 by 3 similarly if I calculate it for R R owns how much 2 ninth actually R is entitled to 2 ninth plus he gets how much 2 sixth of what belongs to P 2 upon 6 into 1 by 3 or 2 by 9 plus 2 by 18. 2 by 18 can be written as 1 by 9 as well. Right? So you get 9 here, 2 plus 1 gives you 3. Or 1 by 3. If you now see the ratio between these two is what? 2 is to 1. So 2 upon 3 is to 1 upon 3. Or 2 is to 1. Which is nothing but the same ratio that we got through the other method. Right? Let's do the second case. If Q retires, Q retires, then P is entitled to one third, R is entitled to two upon nine. Right? Now in this case, I'll just do it by method one. So what is the ratio between these two? One is to three is to two upon nine. We're using method one. Right? But in this case, the denominator is not common. So can I write 1 by 3 as 3 upon 9? I have to make this 3 as 9, for which I need to multiply both the denominator and the numerator by 3. Is to 2 upon 9. Or the ratio is 3 is to 2. Right? So if Q retires, the ratio between P and R is going to be 3 is to 2. Now how about if R retires, 2 ninth? So 1 upon 3 and 4 upon 9. So if R retires, what's the ratio? It's going to be 2, 1 upon 3 and 4 upon 9. 1 upon 3 and 4 upon 9 for P and Q. Again, the denominators are different. So I just convert this into the common denominators. 3 by 9 is to 4 by 9. 
or 3 is to 4. Right? Now try solving these two by the method second and verify at your own end if the result is the same. Right? Thank you for watching being with us today. You can also join our group for commerce student at facebook.com slash my iedubook. Right? Be our friend on this page and then we'll give you an invitation to be the part of the commerce group for class 12th. If you like this video, really please hit the like button at the bottom. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking the subscribe link above. Thank you for being with us today.